Um, I'm going to talk to you today about the microbiome. Um, this is a representation of the human microbiome. Microbiome is simply a word we use to mean the sum collection of all the different microbes on or in a particular thing, um, an artist's rendition of the human microbe, of the human microbiome, all of the yeast, bacteria, and other microbes um, living together or existing in something else. Um, interestingly, this still surprises me every time I say it out loud, the human microbiome has more DNA in it than the human body. So we every day are carrying around from a few days after birth until you know, quite a little bit afterwards, more DNA from microbes than we're carrying human DNA. Um, the human microbe has undergone a lot of scrutiny in the last decade or so as we've started learning uh, quite a bit about its role in, in human disease and human health. The soil also has a microbiome of itself. Um, in just a gram of soil, which is around the size of a pea, there are about 10,000 different microbes. I mean, I'm sorry, 10 million different microbes. Um, think about that. That's well over 10 times the population of San Francisco reduced into an area smaller than a pea. Um, this isn't monolithic in any way. There are thousands of different species existing, coexisting in a dynamic ecosystem in a community where they influence each other, where they regulate each other's concentration and behavior. Um, at Biomakers, we think about this microbiome quite a bit, as you can probably tell. And we think about it really in two ways. We think about it first as a sensor, how we can use the microbiome as a sensor to judge soil and plant health and quality and how we can use the microbiome in the winemaking process to affect the, the quality of wine. How do we do this? We do this by, by measuring, by measuring the microbiome, and then making predictions. It's all about making hypotheses. We measure the microbiome, associate it with metadata, um, wine sensory characteristics, plant health, soil, chemical properties, what have you, um, using data science, and come up with predictions. Um, specific microbes that might be important in the taste profile of a wine, in ecological management, in, in plant health. So I'm going to give you some examples of this, but before I do that, I want to spend um, just one quick slide talking about how we measure the microbiome. So I'm sure you're all familiar with um, quantitative or qPCR tests. I'm also called scorpion tests. Um, these have been around for maybe 20 years, phenomenally great tests for measuring a small number of microbes. The one limitation that qPCR tests have is that you have to know what you're looking for before you look for it. And then you ask the question, is it there? And if it's there, how much of it is there? Phenomenal data if you know what you're looking for. We instead want to look at the entire microbiome, all the species that are there, both those that have been discovered and those that have not yet been discovered, asking the question, who is there? And what is their relative abundance? So for this, we used um, we use so-called next-generation DNA sequencing, exactly what it sounds like. We take the microbes that are there, isolate them, and read their DNA, um, generating many, many terabytes of data in the process. Um, this is one representation of a small snapshot of the data. And what you see here is um, we have, we've plotted it to make it look like qPCR, scorpion-type data that you might be familiar with. But this is data that comes from next-generation DNA sequencing. We looked at 200 different microbial species. Um, they're listed on the bottom. Doesn't really matter if you can read the names or not. They're 200 different species. And we looked at them over time in fermentation. That's what the, the graph is. The x-axis is time in fermentation from shortly after um, inoculation with commercial S or VCA, um, all the way until the fermentation was dry, and in some cases, a little bit afterwards. And um, on top of that, this is an average of 500 fermentations done worldwide. So we know there's successive waves, waves of microbes in fermentation. Here you see representation of that. It's, I think it's a lot more complicated than anyone expected, certainly more complicated than I expected. We see different microbes coming and going in different waves throughout fermentation, perhaps as a function of alcohol concentration. Um, so now let's get into some examples. So I'm going to talk for a few minutes about how we could use the microbe as a diagnostic in the soil, as a disease sensor, by identifying specific pathogens. Um, the first example is powdery mildew. I'm sure uh, many of you have an unfortunate experience with powdery mildew in your past. It's caused by one microorganism, E. indicator. Um, in this one test result, we did find E. indicator. The, the vineyard did score positive for powdery mildew. Um, but I want to point out this was simply one pathological organism that was detected out of 904 in this sample. 
Um, we don't detect it quite often, just under 10% of our samples worldwide. It's actually significantly lower in Napa and significantly higher in Europe. It averages out to about 10%. In this one particular example, the vineyard was very heavily uh, contaminated with this microorganism and the vines were quite sick. Um, you can see that on the histogram. There's a bright red uh, bar on the far right showing um, that this was among the most aggressive contaminations we found with this microbe. Uh, there are other examples. Um, this trunk disease, Utipa dieback, there are a collection of different microorganisms responsible for it. It's a little bit difficult to measure something like this with quantitative PCR. Um, there are about 15 different organisms that can cause this disease. We do detect it fairly uh, more commonly, at least in powdery mildew, about 20% worldwide, and again, significantly less in Napa than in Europe. Uh, this particular um, or in this particular vineyard, we found different regions. We found regions where it was quite, quite aggressive and the vines were already sick. We found it in areas where it was intermediate, and then we also found it in areas of the vineyard where um, we could very readily detect the organism, but there wasn't much of it there. In fact, it was uh, below the threshold of causing disease. So what this is suggesting to us is that we will likely be able to use this approach not necessarily just as a disease diagnostic, but as a disease predictor, where we can detect the disease-causing microbe and when it's still at concentrations that are too low to actually cause disease. Um, at concentrations where it's low enough that we might be able to use different um, viticulture um, manipulations or changed practices to prevent that one particular disease-causing organism from blooming and causing disease in the future. Um, so I'd like to also give some examples of how I might be able to use the microbiome um, as, a, as a fingerprint, as a sensor in winemaking, perhaps to, to control or, or to predict the taste profile of a wine. Um, one important thing that I'd like to point out, I don't have a slide to this, the microbiome that's in the soil is reflected by the microbiome on the grape. Um, almost everything that's in the soil is or can be on the grape, and we haven't found anything on the grape that we haven't also found in the soil. Um, so one simple um, example first, tracing and predicting Brett contamination. Um, this is an unfortunate cab that did come from Napa Valley. Um, there is a little bit of Brett in the wine itself. It's, it's still in the green, it's not too severe, but it's enough that a trained tester can, can certainly identify. Um, this vineyard was trying to trace the, the origin of the contamination and couldn't find it. And we found it in the grapes. Um, you can see that in the middle. We also found it at very high concentration in the soil. Um, there was no way they were going to get rid of bread um, in this particular example unless they you know, switched vineyards. Uh, wouldn't it have been great to know that before they planted the cab? Um, so we all know that different yeast and bacteria come in successive waves during fermentation, and this is a small subset of them. You saw a larger graph earlier. Um, in fact, it's, predict it's predicted that at least a third of the volatile um, components of wine are either produced by or uh, modified in some way by the different microbial species in the soil, in the grape, in the wine. How can we measure them? How can we control them? Um, one example, a, a winery... I believe this was somewhere in California. This might have been from Santa Cruz. I wanted to make a Sauve Blanc, and they wanted to use a native fermentation, but they'd never done it before. And we tested their samples, and we found a very high concentration of T. Dobrocki, um, but nothing else. So um, because we found no spoilage yeast and did find this perhaps beneficial yeast at fairly high concentrations, the winemaker did proceed with a native fermentation. Um, you see here an example of the, or a representation of the microbiome in the grape. There's quite a bit of the, trellis, of the, the T. Dabrocki in orange. Um, they started fermentation, never adding a commercial yeast. Over time, of course, SRVCI did take over. Um, it's likely in the angel's breath of the winery, if you will. But for quite a bit of time during fermentation, it was these native species, at least in part, that were um, at highest abundance during the fermentation. Um, here's another example um, where the winery was able to avoid uh, most likely a spoiled uh, fermentation or at least one with high volatile acidity levels as we did find uh, quite a bit of, of K. apiculata um, in the sample. We don't detect this readily, it's about 2%. Uh, about 2% of the samples we analyze have this particular bug. Um, in this 
um, soil and grape sample, it was quite prevalent, around 30%, 40% of all of the, the microbe mass on the grape. So the winemaker here used a higher than normal SO2 in their must, inoculated with a commercial S or a VCA, got quite a good wine at the end of the day that had, didn't have any volatile acidity. And you can see very early on the uh, commercial S or VCA that was added took over the fermentation, um, outcompeting the K. apiculata quite quickly. Um, so with that, I'd like to move to, to one other topic, and that's now using the microbiome more globally as a biomarker for different things, as a biomarker for vineyard practices, perhaps as a biomarker for different regions. Um, can we use the, the readout of the microbiome um, to tell us something about the soil, either the region the soil came from or how the soil was maintained and farmed? Um, this really comes from work that was started uh, many years ago by David Mills. I know he spoke here last year. He published a beautiful paper from his lab at UC Davis, I believe it was in 2001, where he compared five different regions within California and found that the microbiome of the five different regions within California was distinguishable. And we've extended that work uh, by looking worldwide. We have about 3,000 samples now um, from many hundreds of sites in most of the major wine growing regions around the globe. And we see the same thing that Professor Mills saw. Um, the different regions have distinct microbiomes. The microbiome from Burgundy is not the same as the microbiome in the Russian River. The microbiome in Bordeaux is not the same as the microbiome here in Napa. If you give us soil that's blinded, we can tell you, generally speaking, what part of the world it comes from. Um, in fact, as we're now getting more and more samples and looking at higher resolution, it's likely that we're even going to see vineyard to vineyard to vineyard clustering um, in the different microorganisms that are there in the soil. What this means, uh, we don't know. It's nice to think of this perhaps as a quantitative scientific readout of terroir. What that means, we don't know. What we're interested in is in how we can control this to benefit the soil, to benefit the vines, to benefit the wine. Um, we also see changes in the microbiome with respect to farming practices. Um, this was a huge surprise to us. Um, we um, routinely find well over 10,000 different microbial species in a sample of soil. Uh, the vast majority of them, again, now this is average globally worldwide, the vast majority of them are common between conventionally farmed vineyards and organic or long-held organic or biodynamically farmed vineyards. But there are some microbes that are distinct. There are around 40 that we've only ever found in conventionally farmed vineyards, and there are around 10 that we've only found in organic or biodynamically farmed vineyards. We don't know what they do, if anything. We don't know if they're causing something, or we don't know if they're a reflection of something. But um, we certainly know that this is something that we want to keep looking at um, to see how we might be able to manipulate these species for the benefit of the plant, for the benefit of the wine. Uh, so with that, I'll end. Um, I am part of Biomakers. We're headquartered here in San Francisco, but there are only two of us here in the San Francisco office. The rest of my team is in Spain. We were all together just a few days ago, um, which is where this picture was taken and why I have a little bit of a cold, so I hope you can all hear me. Um, I'd like to end by saying, if any of you would like to join us on this mission to generate hypotheses, to ask these kinds of questions, and perhaps come up with really interesting answers on how we can use the microbiome um, to benefit our soil, to benefit our vines, to benefit our wine, please find me today, email me, call me. I'm sure we can find a way to work together and, of course, analyze the samples all on the company's dime uh, to move towards answering some of these questions. Thank you. All right. So thank you, John. There is no question on the slide, though, but maybe somebody wants to ask a question. We are commercial. Well, we will be commercial. We are very much <laughs> developing um, R&D phase, developing our product. Uh, we are launching a vineyard diagnostic disease predictor. Um, the rest of it, the bigger picture, is, is still very much research heavy at this point, which is where uh, we'd love help from everyone in the room. On, on your research on powdery mildew, could you compare it to a vineyard that maintains a cover crop versus a vineyard that will disc and cultivate every year? Um, I know we will be able to have more information on that in the very near future as we continue to analyze more samples specifically with that question in mind. But today, I don't have anything I can tell you. Okay. Uh, 
Sorry, so there is one question here, and you have the mic over there. So here. Is On the powdery mildew uh, sampling, uh, one out of 900 organisms uh, was E. nicator. Uh, is that only in the sample that had powdery mildew on it? Were those 901 all together on the same sample? Or is that various sampling throughout the vineyard? It does vary a little bit, sample by sample in the vineyard. Um, there does seem to be a lot of consistency by block. And we leave it to the, the winery or to the vineyard to define a block for us. Um, but that would be 900 and whatever it was samples in or organisms in that one particular sample. Okay, so there is one question on side though, and then we'll have to, to move. So the question was, can you speak about what makes the biome in Napa different from other locations? Um, I wish I could. The, the <laughs> organisms are different. Um, we can go in, I don't have the information in front of me and I certainly don't have it in my head, um, what the specific species are that are different. It's more a matter of concentration than it is identity. Um, beyond that, I can't say anything and we certainly don't know if it means anything at this point. But it is significant <coughs> enough that if we have blinded soil, we can predict where it did come from. Okay, so th thank you very much, John. Please keep asking questions on the slide. Right, okay.